Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create a population pyramid chart for your data set. Even before I demonstrate how to create a population pyramid chart using SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by talking about a population pyramid graph. What exactly is a population pyramid graph and why do we use this? A population pyramid graph is used to compare two groups or two cohorts. Typically, you can compare the growth rate between two countries. Let's say you want to compare the growth rate between India and China. The easiest and the simplest way to do this would be through a population pyramid graph. In this example, I will be using the car sales data set, which is present in SPSS. Let me introduce to my audience the data set that I'll be using. The first column that you see is the type of vehicle. As you can see here, there are two types of vehicles. One is automobiles. If I scroll down, you can see there are a lot of records of trucks. So these are the two groups of vehicles that I'm interested in comparing. That is automobiles and trucks. There are different parameters for these two groups that are given in the data set. You have different vehicle characteristics like resale value of the vehicles. What is the price of the vehicle? Engine size, horsepower, wheelbase, width, length, so on and so forth. I'm interested in comparing the distribution of automobiles with that of trucks. How do we do this? The simplest and the most effective way to do this would be through a population pyramid graph. To create a population pyramid chart, what you could do is you can click on the graphs menu. Once you, let me just do this again. I have to click on the graphs menu. Once I click on the graphs menu, the last option here is legacy dialogs. As I hover the mouse on top of legacy dialogs, SPSS displays all the options that are present in legacy dialogs. I'll be clicking on the ninth option from the top, which is called as population pyramid. Let me go ahead and select this particular option. As you can see here, the moment I click on the population pyramid graph, there is a new window that is displayed. On the left hand side, you can see all the variables that are present in the data set. The first option here is show distribution over. Remember, under this option, you have to select a scale variable. I repeat, you have to select a scale variable. Do not select a categorical variable. The first variable, in fact, the second variable here would be the resale value. Let me go ahead and select the resale value. You can see the option split by. SPSS is asking me what are the two groups based on which you want to compare the resale value. The very first variable here is vehicle type. I'm going to select vehicle type and push this under the split by option. What this gives me is the distribution of the resale value for automobiles and trucks. I have selected resale value. You can go ahead and select any of the other parameters like price, engine size, horsepower, so on and so forth. Essentially, we would be comparing each of the vehicle characteristics for automobiles and trucks. With this selection, you can go ahead and hit the OK button. Let me now show you the output window. You can see here. This is the output window. There are a lot of details here. So let me begin by explaining one by one. In the Y axis, you're able to see price in thousand. What do you see in the X axis? 
you see frequency. This represents the frequency of vehicles. In the left hand side, you can see the distribution of automobiles and the right hand side, you are able to see the distribution of truck. The graph on the left hand side is the histogram for the distribution of price of automobiles. The graph on the right hand side, which is shown in red, is the histogram which tells me the distribution of price for trucks. There are two important observations that we make. The longest bar that you see for automobile is for 20,000. What does this mean? This simply means that majority of the automobiles have a price of 20,000. Have a look at the zero line. The central line is the zero line. The lowest value is around 10,000 and the highest value is around 90,000. Since the histogram is spread over a wider area, I can see that there is more variation in the price of automobiles. Let's now look at the graph on the right hand side. You can see here, this represents the section for trucks. What is this telling you? This is telling you the distribution of price in thousands for truck. There are two long bars, which means that this is a bimodal distribution. The long bars have a value of 20,000. So what does this mean? This means that majority of the trucks have a price of 20,000. So as you can see here, the trucks have a higher price as compared to the automobiles. Have a look at the spread of the data. The minimum value is approximately 10,000 for trucks and the maximum value here is around 70,000. So relatively, the variation in price for trucks is lesser as compared to that of automobiles. Let's now proceed to look at another population pyramid graph. As you can see here, I'm comparing automobiles and trucks as before. The y-axis here is fuel efficiency and the x-axis is frequency. So in this graph, I'm comparing the fuel efficiency or mileage per gallon between automobiles on the left-hand side and trucks on the right-hand side. What's very interesting is there's a long bar for automobiles against a value of 25, which means that majority of the automobiles give me a mileage of 25 units. Let's look at the long bar for trucks. It is approximately 20, which means that majority of the trucks are giving me a mileage of less than 20. When you compare the spread of the histogram for automobiles and trucks, the distribution is spread over a longer area for automobiles as compared to that of the trucks, implying that there is more variation in the mileage of automobiles as compared to that of trucks. We've seen two population pyramid. The first population pyramid that we have seen was for the parameter price in thousand. Next, we have seen for fuel efficiency. Let's now make a move on to the third population pyramid graph. As before, I'm comparing automobiles and trucks. The parameter of interest is fuel capacity. You see a lot of long bars for automobiles for fuel capacity. The longest bar that I see is approximately 17.5, which means that majority of the automobiles are giving me a fuel, majority of the automobiles have a fuel capacity of approximately 17.5. What can I say 
about the distribution of the trucks. The longest bar that I'm seeing here is for 20, which means that majority of the trucks have a fuel capacity of 20. So this is how it becomes very, very easy for us to compare between two groups. In this example, I'm comparing automobiles and trucks. You can easily replace automobiles and trucks with the performance of two countries, let's say India and China, or India and Pakistan, or India and United States of America. Here we have fuel capacity. You can compare the distribution of the growth rate or population or any other macroeconomic indicator for the two countries. Let's now look at the fourth population pyramid chart. In the y-axis, I have curve weight, which means I'm comparing the curve weight for automobiles with that of trucks. Again, I have a bimodal distribution. You can see here the maximum value for automobiles is around three. The first bar is for three, and the next big bar is for approximately 3.5, which means that majority of the automobiles have a curb weight of 3 or 3.5. What can we say about the trucks? The longest bar is this particular bar. And against this, I can see a value of 4, which means that majority of the trucks have a curb weight of 4. Let's now look at the last population pyramid chart. The longest bar here for the four-year resale value is around 10,000. In fact, it is exceeding 10,000. I'm just rounding it off to 10,000 which means that majority of the automobiles have a four-year resale value of 10,000. Have a look at the spread of the histogram. It starts with roughly 5,000, goes all the way up to 65,000. So since the spread is wider, I can say that there is more variation in the resale value for automobiles. On the right-hand side, you can see the histogram for truck. The, la the longest bar here is the one for which the value is 20,000. What does this imply? This simply implies that majority of the trucks have a four-year resale value of 20,000. Have a look at the spread of the histogram. It is narrower, indicating that there is less variation in the resale value of trucks as compared to that of automobiles. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we have seen what's the population pyramid and how you can create a population pyramid chart using SPSS. I hope you have liked this video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.